Well, good morning. It's time for Cup of Hope. I'm Stephanie Winslow, and I'm so grateful to be with you this morning to bring to you a message from the Word of God. We have much in store for this week as we walk through the final five commandments of the Ten Commandments that we were given in the Old Testament. Um, we are uh, seeking to find the truth in, in the Scripture and recognizing that just because it was written in the Old Testament doesn't mean that it is not for us today, that it absolutely is for us today, that we uh, it can will help shape us and mold us to make us um, righteous before God, but also it will help us in all of our relationships and how we're dealing with um, our our friends, our family, uh, it will just help us in our relationship, not only with God, but this week specifically, now we're looking at our relation and how we interact with those around us. So these first, or this one we're going to talk about today, which is uh, the sixth commandment in the Ten Commandments. Uh, it's to me, it's, it's one of those like, yeah, duh, I know that. Like, of course, that makes sense. Um, but then we're going to also look at some scripture from the New Testament and how Jesus takes the, that commandment even farther and, and takes it even deeper to, to the heart uh, behind this commandment. Um, so I hope that you had a great weekend, that you were able to, to filter in, to fit in some some rest for you and for your family. And if if you are starting down the road of practicing Sabbath, I'd love to hear how God is, is moving in that area of your life, how he is shaping you, how he's giving you the, the tools to do it. Um, I'd love to hear some feedback from you. And even just as we, we, we talk through these scriptures, anything God lays on your heart um, that you feel comfortable sharing, it would be such a blessing not only to me, but to also the rest of the Cup of Hope family that's watching. Uh, we, we just, we learn and grow from each other. And so sharing what we're walking through um, and sharing what God is teaching us is such a blessing and you just never know how it's gonna impact someone else who is also watching. So let's grab our cups and lift them up and ask the Lord to fill us up today with the hope that he has in store for us through his word. So as I said, we're, we're back to um, looking at the Ten Commandments, and today is commandment number six, which is from, we're going to look at Deuteronomy 517, part A, and it's a very simple command. It says, do not murder. Do not murder. And I, I admit that for me, again, like just murder seems very extreme when we were just talking about last Friday about honor your mom and dad. And then it's like from <laughs> very sharp turn uh, of trajectory and, and now is not looking at honor, but then do not murder. And that, to me, it's just an extreme um, but shift in thinking. Uh, but I believe that that if God had to write it down, uh, clearly it's a problem, right? It, clearly it's something that isn't so obvious uh, to people. Uh, and I almost, when I was thinking about this, um, what came to my mind was, you know how on like coffee cups that you get at McDonald's or Starbucks or wherever it is, it has to write, they have to write the, the caution, this is hot. The contents are hot. Well, well, yes, duh, I ordered coffee. Of course it's going to be hot. <laughs> like, that's my expectation. But clearly that isn't the expectation of people or, or how you know people in general, especially in the time when this was written, that do not murder was something that uh, God had to specifically talk to people about. Um, that it's not okay to take another person's life. Um, and what it was wrestling with too is that murder Yes, obviously there's a, a very clear physical murder, right? If, but I also was wondering about this, the emotional murder or the um, just a, how we engage with people and the words that we're speaking to them, uh, how we're killing the spirit of a person or how we might be killing the emotion of a person when we're speaking to them in a way that is not uplifting, it's not building them up, it's not encouraging them, when we're just tearing people down. 
is that the same? It's not a physical murder, but it's a it's a different kind of murder because we're we're killing really. We're killing the heart of the person. We're killing the inside of the person. And so I just I was really wrestling with that as well, like just thinking, okay, yeah, of course I for me personally, I haven't killed anyone with my hands, physically killed someone or murdered someone with my hands. But I just was wondering for myself how many people I have wounded um, and just killed their spirit because I've spoken words that maybe just cut to their heart. Um, and so that's something that has been brought to my attention um, that God was working in my heart with. Um, and also the fact that there are so many defenseless people out there, the people that don't have a voice, even the unborn, right? They don't have a voice, but yet if we aren't fighting on their behalf, if we aren't fighting on behalf of the unborn, um, if we aren't going to bat for them, if we're not standing up and advocating that the unborn have life, is that the same as just allowing murder to happen in my presence because I'm not speaking up and doing anything about it. So that was the other thing that was really convicting to me as I'm looking at these scripture. But here's what I think is interesting too, is that in Jesus, uh, as he's teaching in Matthew 5, 21 through 22, if you have a pen, I suggest that you jot this down, as well as Deuteronomy 5, 17. Matthew 5, 21 through 22 says, You have heard that our own fathers were told, do not murder, that anyone who commits murder will be subject to judgment. But I tell you, this is Jesus speaking, that anyone who nurses anger against his brother will be subject to judgment, that whoever calls his brother you good for nothing will be brought before the Sanhedrin and whoever says you fool incurs the penalty of the burning fire of hell. And so Jesus isn't specifically talking to, about behavior, right? And so the, the Old Testament, the, the commandment is do not murder. That's a, a behavior. That's an action that happens, a, a physical action that happens. Jesus takes that, that commandment even deeper and he's talking directly to the heart. So if we're nursing anger, which I think is a very interesting phrase, if we're allowing anger to grow in our hearts, if we're taking that seed of anger, and we've talked about this before in the past, that how that, that anger can quickly turn to bitterness, if we're allowing that to be planted in our heart, to, to, be, to grow and to be cultivated in our hearts, then we're actually allowing ourselves to produce the, the um, behavior of murder and Jesus is saying here that murder physical murder is is one thing but he's talking about our heart because if our hearts are right then our actions will be in alignment if if our heart isn't nursing anger then the likelihood that we're actually going to commit some sort of physical murder um, or even speak ill toward our brother or sister is even less likely if our heart is right so Jesus takes it even farther and he gets straight to the point and, and is dealing with the heart of the person, the heart of the person, and that is where the judgment will lie, is in the heart of the person. If we're dealing with the person at um, a heart level, then th those actions that flow out of us will, will be in alignment with that, right? So. I, again, was, was, <laughs> was sort of thinking, well, this one will just kind of be easy because yeah, you know, murder isn't something that I typically struggle <laughs> with. Um, and not to make light of that because obviously that is not a funny subject. But um, I've, I feel like, you know, obviously, typically most people aren't struggling with whether or not to kill someone. Like, that's not a, a, a struggle that I believe most of us are dealing with. But what we do deal with is anger anger towards someone. What we do deal with is the heart that we have that when we just, we sputter these fr these things and you good for nothing, you fool. When we're speaking ill towards someone, when we are harboring that anger, when we're allowing anger against someone to grow in us, it's the same because the heart behind it is the same. Um, and so 
I'm convicted this morning about how I speak about my brothers and sisters, how I allow the thoughts and that, that anger to stir up in me um, toward other people. I'm convicted this morning and I'm, I don't know how this sits with you, but uh, I'm going to pray for us this morning that, that God would convict us in those areas in the heart that need conviction. Um, so let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I just come before you this morning and confess that I thought I was um, kind of above reproach in this area of this command, Lord, but you have shown me yet again that this is an area that I need work. I need cultivating. I need pruning in this area, Lord, that it's not just about the physical act of murdering someone. It's just, it, but it Jesus takes it to our heart and he's looking at the heart behind it. Um, and so Father, for those areas where of my life and for the lives of my brothers and sisters who are watching today that we have been stirring up and, and harboring anger against another person in our hearts, Father, I pray that you would just set us free from it, that you would bring us to our knees, that you would help us to ask for forgiveness um, not only from you, but also from that, that brother or sister that we've been harboring that anger against, Lord, that you would set us free from that. Uh, and, and just like your word tells us that if we, are, we, are, um, if we have anger toward our brother or sister, we're, we're speaking ill about them and toward them, that we will be held accountable for that. We will be judged for that. So, Father, I pray right now, here, right now, in these moments following Cup of Hope, that we would seek forgiveness, Lord, that there would be no need to be judged here, Lord, because we have surrendered it all to you. I thank you, Father, for all this and praise you. I thank you for your continual teaching, how you bring us to our knees, Lord, and that you continue to remind us how much we need you. We are nothing without you, Father. May you receive all of the glory for every good thing that is happening in our lives. Because apart from you, we are nothing. I thank you, Father, for all of this. And pray a special blessing on my Auntie Jill, who is watching this morning for her birthday. And thank you for the precious woman that she is. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Be blessed and be well. My Lord, thank you for being with me this morning. I pray that you have a blessed day um, and that God does just stir in you uh, and, and teaches you exactly what it is that he needs you to hear this morning. Take care and I'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye-bye.